you're on. Okay, today we're going to be talking about transitional cell carcinoma in canines, specifically in Scottish Terriers. Oh, sorry, it's not plugged in like that. Just do gotcha. use the down arrow. Sorry. So to begin with, what is TCC? TCC is the abbreviation of transitional cell carcinoma. And this is an aggressive form of bladder cancer. In humans, about 400,000 people currently have bladder cancer and 16,000 die each year, mostly due to cancers like TCC. But luckily for humans, the cancers are usually lower grade and superficial. And this means that under the microscope, the cells <coughs> look pretty normal and um, that it's not gonna invade the bladder muscle. Part of the reason I was interested in this topic is that last year my grandpa was diagnosed with bladder cancer, but luckily it was lower grade and superficial, so he's in remission now, but this was part of the reason why I was interested in this topic. In dogs, 1.4 million dogs currently have bladder cancer. This may seem like a lot, but it's only 2% because there's 70 million dogs in the United States, so that comes out to 1.4. And unfortunately for dogs, the bladder cancer is usually higher grade and invasive. This means that the cells look really abnormal underneath the microscope and that it invades into the bladder muscle. And so the other reason I was really interested in this topic is our university is doing extensive research on TCC. I volunteered last year in our university's oncology department in the veterinary teaching hospital where they're doing very extensive research into this disease. And so one thing they're working on is creating a screening protocol for high risk breeds. And so the, um, the doctors started this experiment in 2014, so it's wrapping up in 2017. So we'll be getting the results soon. So they took seven-year-old healthy Scottish Terriers that every month they're giving them a physical exam, an ultrasound of their bladder, a urine and blood collection and analysis. And they're checking to see if anything's abnormal to catch something before bladder cancer begins. So they're checking for like a thickening of the bladder wall or abnormal cells in the urine. And if they see any of those things, they're gonna give the animal's Dermamax, which is a drug that um, inhibits growth factors and tumor promoters. So basically it's gonna slow down the progression of any bladder cancer if it's there, yes. Um, so you said for high-risk breeds, um, do they know what determines which breeds are high-risk? Yes, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Are you gonna explain what's in the circle? Yes. I, I'm having a laser pointer over here too. This is <laughs> <laughs> And so other treatment development working on over there is EGR-directed toxin which is a drug that is injected directly into the bladder and it targets cancer cells. Mm -hmm. Also venurofenib, which is another drug that kills tumor cells that have a very precise mutation. <coughs> so this is a ultrasound of a Scottish Terrier that has TCC, so that's one of the bladder tumors that is on the wall. And that's an ultrasound picture. <coughs> and so the causation of TCC, the biggest one is a genetic predisposition. And so it's more common in specific breeds of dogs. Scottish Terriers are the main ones they have an 18 to 20% higher risk than other dogs um, for getting this disease. If you have a Beagle, a West Highland Terrier, a Shetland Sheepdog, or a Fox Terrier, those dogs are at a three to five times higher risk. Gender also plays a role. Female dogs are two times more likely than intact males to get TCC, but neutering also plays a role, so neutered dogs are four times more likely to get TCC than intact males. Environmental factors also play a big role in this. And so pesticides and insecticides um, more so. And so like pesticides like lawn fertilizers and insecticides, especially old generation flea dips, which is what this is. So basically it's a flea and tick medication that you mix in with your dog's shampoo or you give them a bath directly in the flea and tick dip. And so this has been linked to cause TCC and other bladder cancers. Also living near a marsh makes a big difference because mm -hmm. when you live near a marsh, there's a lot more insects and so they use a great, a much higher concentration of pesticides and insecticides. And so all of those environmental factors lead to about a seven times increase in the chance of getting bladder cancer. And so some clinical symptoms and signs of TCC, blood and urine, strain to urinate, and frequent urination are the top three. And this is kind of like a double-edged sword because this is also the most common symptoms of bladder stones and UTIs, which are really common in dogs. And they're really easily treatable as well. You just treat them with an antibiotic, maybe a change in diet if it's a bladder stone. And so they'll clear up really quick. So it's really often like not to diagnose TCC right away and think that it's actually something that's a lot more harmless. One of the later symptoms of TCC is lameness. And so this is when the cancer in the bladder spread to the bones, or it also may do, be due to hypertrophic osteopathy. Hypertrophic means an enlargement of the organ or tissue. 
And osteopathy means relating to bones because the most common places for a bladder tumor to metastasize is in the lungs or the lymph nodes. And so if you see right here, this is bladder cancer that actually metastasizes to the lungs. And when it metastasizes to the lungs, it, the dog can go into hypertrophic osteopathy where the nerves in the lungs are stimulated and they send a lot of blood to the bones. And so this causes extra bone formation, which you see right here. And then in the actual dog, it looks like this. So it causes really stiff, enlarged, and painful limbs. So that's another symptom of TCC. And so how is TCC diagnosed? An ultrasound is not completely diagnostic because bladder growth, infection, stones, or inflammation can cause masses that look really similar to TCC on um, the ultrasound. Or it can also, like a bladder growth or a UTI can also cause abnormal cells in the urine. So it's not the best way to diagnose TCC. So you actually, it requires a tissue biopsy. And this is acquired via surgery, cystoscopy, or a urinary catheter. At our veterinary teaching hospital, we use cystoscopy more so. I've seen a lot of cystoscopies. And so they use this tool right here. It's a really long metal tool that at the end has a little pincher. And there's also a scope at the end so that you can watch a video of it going in. And so you're looking for something like this. This is called a polyp. And so it's a small growth of TCC. So that's a really small growth of bladder cancer. So you're going to insert the cystoscopy device into the urethra and go and find one of those and pull it out. You don't want to grab a really big piece of bladder tissue because otherwise you're going to cause internal bleeding. So you're looking for just a small piece. And so um, some prevention. Scotty's that ate vegetables three times weekly showed a 70% decreased risk of bladder grills, and this was any vegetable. This study was done in 2005, so it may seem a little bit outdated, but before our university started doing TCC research, no one else was really doing it. So 2005 was kind of like the most latest research before we started doing it. And that's not so long ago. No, it's not too long ago. It's about 10 years or so. Yeah, and so um, another prevention method is screening. So if you know you have a high risk breed, if you have a Scottish Terrier, maybe if you um, go for your yearly veterinary appointment to get an ultrasound, get a urine culture, just to see that nothing funky is going on. You can also limit your insecticide and pesticide usage. Some treatment options. Surgery is not a very effective method because this cancer is really highly metastasizable and has a really high chance of reoccurring. And so it's usually um, not a very good option. Radiation shows some success, but there's a lot more difficulties with it because if you think about a bladder, it's going to be filling and expelling urine at all times pretty much, and so it's not really staying in one place. So if you're targeting the radiation at your bladder, it's not really going to be getting in the same spot every time. And so more often than not, it just scars and shrinks the bladder and it irritates the organs around the bladder. So it usually causes more problems than benefits. The most um, effective method is medication plus chemotherapy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'll have you finish in one minute after the question. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you know how much it would cost to treat with medication and chemotherapy for this? Um, from what I saw, chemotherapy like this one down here, where you get the intravenous every two weeks, is about a thousand dollars a month or so. And so it's, it's still pretty, pretty a lot. And so um, the most common medication to treat TCC is paroxicam. And this is an interesting story because it was originally used for pain relief due to cancer, like an extra strength Advil. And um, our university was like, let's do a study then, because two dogs miraculously went into remission with advanced stage cancer. And so our university did a study of 62 dogs, two went into complete remission, nine had a 50% decrease in their tumor size, 35 remained stable, and the survival rate up from zero days to 195 days. So that's still one of the most common medications we use, and um, you can also um, like pair this with chemo, and you have an even higher success rate. And so this is my last slide. Mm -hmm. But the future of TCSC is looking up. The survival used to be zero days before our university started doing research, and veterinarians would often euthanize upon diagnosis. But now with the different <laughs> treatment methods, the, the dogs generally survive for 250 to 300 days. Um, and one thing that they're working on currently is metronomic chemotherapy, which is a low daily dose of a chemotherapy pill. And this doesn't kill cancer cells directly, but it blocks the formation of new blood vessels. And as you know, cancer can't metastasize and grow and spread if it doesn't have a blood vessel to take over. And lastly, this is really important because TCC in dogs is almost identical to the human form of it. 
And so human trials have begun for a lot of the drugs and protocols that our university has created. And that can help people like my grandpa. So very exciting stuff. Yeah. That's it. Any questions? Another quick question? Yeah, that's called a, you know, you use an animal model for a human disease. That's kind of common. You, thank you. That's great. Transitional cell. Okay, whose presentation is hyperthermia? How would you start it? And uh, look at that vertical green line while I get my camera reset.